So now, Vic. Mm. Was there a lot of humour in your household when you were no. a kid? <laughs> no. Wasn't well, there? no, my father was quite funny. My mother always famously claimed to have no sense of humour whatsoever, which I think was true. Right. And so I was, I was the funny one out of the four of us. I used to pull faces, that's what I was good at. My mother used to say, go and pull us one of your faces, and I'd go in the back kitchen and think of a face and come back and pull it. Impressions of people? No, no, or no, just I was only about four. Faces. I was only okay. about four. Funny faces, a funny face. Okay, so pull funny faces to order, in fact. Yes, what... yeah, which right. is really what and I ended up doing. Laugh. They would laugh hilariously they would. at this. They would, yeah. And so were you tempted to perform inside the family for the brothers and sisters no. to... No, we, all, we lived in a house where we were in separate rooms, so we didn't, we didn't interact at all. I had a room with a television and a piano in it that I was just in on my own. Okay. We, never, we didn't eat together after a certain point in our family life. Didn't you? No. No, we did everything separately. OK. And you say your dad was funny. What, yes, what my dad was very witty. My dad played piano and wrote music and wrote songs and wrote radio plays and, and was funny. Radio plays that were on the radio? Yeah. yeah. Did he? Mm. So you are from a showbiz family. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty yeah. showbiz parents. <laughs> he was an insurance salesman, but he was, uh, in his spare time, he wrote... And when you went to school, to junior school, were you encouraged to be anything of a performer? Not at all. Not at all at junior school. No, I was fairly quiet. I was just one of those... I was one of the clever ones. And and senior school, did any of that...? Senior school, I did things like... I wrote funny things sometimes and read them out, but I was not the class clown. I didn't attract a lot of attention to myself. I could only really do it through writing and later on through acting. And were you in a group of... Girls, did you have a no, little I was gang? All, no, I was outside a gang. I looked very enviously upon gangs and groups and wanted to be in them, and I was never in one until later. Did you not try to insert yourself into a gang? <laughs> I did try. I mean, I, I, I tried too hard in that way that it never, ever will work, and I had, you know, other lame friends who were always trying to do the same thing that weren't that you didn't really want to be friends with but they were just available because they had calipers or plasters over their glasses or something and I was fat so I was in the losers group really. So not at all using the humour to attract people to you then? No no I I didn't I didn't have that ability to 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 attract attention I didn't want to attract attention in a lot of ways but secretly I did but I didn't know how you did it and I was I was always very admiring of, of various girls that were funny and I would say now that they're still funny and that, that they were funnier than I was at the time who did you laugh at when you were growing up well, can you remember I can't really remember except I watched everything that was ever on the television that was a comedy so I, I think I just laughed at everything I mean I can remember Lucille Ball and I can remember Phil Silvers but I don't remember anything particular that I liked about them. I think I just liked the fact that it was comedy and I would only go to the cinema if it was a comedy and my parents would get the paper on a Friday night and go through the films and I would say, is it a comedy, is it a comedy, is it a comedy? And if it wasn't, I wouldn't go. I was just very, very drawn to comedy. So you were watching things like Jerry Lewis? Yes. Yeah. Comedy Um, movies like that? Yes, comedy movies. Okay. Yeah. And do you remember any women that particularly...? The two women I remember very well. One was Libby Morris, who I think is Canadian, who was on the television. She had a thing that's called a one-woman show, and I used to think, what on earth is that, a one-woman show? <laughs> and then the other person I did see live on stage was Joyce Grenfell when I was about six. Oh. And I was taken round to meet her at the end of the show. Were you? And I remember that very, very well. I remember the show, I remember some of the lines. I remember very well the fact that she was just standing on stage on her own. I'd never seen anybody do that before. I'd been to pantomimes and I'd been to plays. I'd never seen one person stand on the stage on their own. And she came on and she said, I'll give you a moment to decide whether my dress is leaf green or lettuce green. And she looked at the audience and she said, oh, well, it's quality, not quantity. So it was obviously a half-empty house. I think it was in Buxton. And at the end of the show, my sister said they wanted to go around and see her. Um, I don't know why. It was a strange thing to do. My mother, my mother said, oh, you can't go because you're too little. So we waited outside and she came out and she said, oh, is this Vicky? Which was my name at the time. And she came out and said hello to me. And I never, ever forgot it. Did you love the show? Yeah. I loved it, yeah. Which... I love the fact that she was... She, she was peopling the stage with, with nothing but, but words. And that you could, you could see those children that were doing awful things, George, don't do that. I could see all that happening in front of me. So, really, she was an inspiration then? She was. Okay. She was an inspiration, not just because she was good, because, but because it put the idea in my head of a woman standing on stage on her own. And that was a very, very powerful image, and I think that really informed what I did later. I've got... Um... A, a bit of a query going on in my mind at the moment about whether comedy is a sort of 
It's like the, um, whether it's a proper job. Well, I think it would be a very thin way to live if, if there were no comedians. And I think they're very, they're very life-enhancing when they're good. And it's a very important part of the way we live, is to have it celebrated in comedy. Yeah. yeah. And I guess we always have had comedians. If, mm. Even if we've paid jesters to kind of come into it's court. And hit then, us with pigs and ladders. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That old routine. Yeah, but yeah. we haven't quite um, rewarded them in the way that comedians now seem to have a sort of slightly rock and roll status. I mean, there's big fashion for comedy. Yeah, the, the, there is a fashion, but I think it is just a fashion and it will, it will fade away. And we'll you seem back. to be slightly outside that thing, <laughs> always, all the way along. You managed to escape the alternative thing. Oh, that's because I was too old. I was too well, old to be alternative. But you were being alternative, if I understand alternative yeah, so correctly. Yes, I just wasn't in that. I wasn't in that group. I was sort of like three or four years ahead. Yeah, yeah. But you managed to not be branded as anything no. particularly. You've, you've no. managed to sail right through the middle. Why do you, why well, do you think? People were just baffled. I think when I first arrived, because people always liked to label you, and they didn't know they didn't know what to make of me. And also, I wasn't very good, so I don't I don't blame them for their bafflement, really. Mm. There is no label for it. And then eventually people just like it for what it is and they don't worry about what it is. Yeah. And, of course, now virtually all the people we've spoken to, certainly the stand-up girls, are uh, referred to as a bit like Victoria Wood mm. or not quite like mm. Victoria Wood or not mm. as good as Victoria Wood. So you're the person everybody's <laughs> measured up to now. When did you first think that comedy could actually be a, a career for you? I'm not sure. I first joined a theatre workshop, a youth theatre, when I was about 15, and, and that was the first time I ever felt, you know, like a key's gone in a lock and I know what I'm doing, I understand I have something that I can do. And I played a comedy charwoman in a play, and I thought, yeah, I, I can do something. And up until that point, I never really felt I was any good at anything, really. And people were always crossing me, people were always disappointed and saying, you know, you're not, not good, not, you don't work hard enough, you look a mess. And that was the first time I felt sort of really comfortable about doing anything anything um but I didn't I didn't articulate that as something that could be a career choice and I remember at school they used to say to me well you you, you should be in uh, you should be in journalism or you should be in advertising because you're very you know very quick to write you have a good vocabulary I was quite funny when I wrote but I didn't actually think of being um a comedian it just didn't occur to me and I didn't think I would make it as an actress because I didn't think I had the conventional looks to go into rep so I, I was quite a small I was thinking quite a small box of what I could do but then by the time I got to university I suppose I just I just wanted to perform somehow I mean I did blundered around I was so thick about the way I approached everything it did take me quite a few years to to get a grip, really, to work out what what you did and how you did it. Well, it's not as if there's any actual guidance towards no, this there job. Is no, there is no, no. I mean, you wouldn't sit with a careers advisor who would say, ah, oh, can write well, mm. seems yes. to be funny. Yes. Oh, well, perhaps stand-up mm. would be the... Mm. Nobody would ever suggest that. I remember going to a careers fair in Bury where I lived, and... and, and the, the drama section it was, it was just a very miserable man with dandruff and I said I want to be an actress he said don't that's my advice to you don't and that that was the careers fair at Berry. thanks a lot <laughs> thank you thanks very much <laughs> next oh dear <laughs> do, do you think that performing stand up mm. d d does it make you happy it's taken me a long time to reach a point where I could receive what I was getting that, that I could I could just sort of take it and, en and enjoy it. I think, you know, I approached it in such a, not a tense way, but, you know, so anxious to get it right and to, to be the best I could be with it that I didn't always relax with it. And I watch other people and I think, they're not working, they're not working half as hard as me and that's mu they're much better. You don't, have to, you don't have to be perfect. You could just be and it would be all right. So I think next time I go back and do it, I'll, I might approach it in a slightly different way but oh you thought that very <clears throat> recently yes yeah good lord i wouldn't know that <laughs> i really wouldn't know <laughs> but that. but i mean i have reason. i have enjoyed i have enjoyed a lot of the stuff i've done the last the last show i did i did i did enjoy it and and also i had somebody else on stage with me i had a keyboard player on stage and that made a huge difference to me because it just was somebody else to catch yeah, an eye with the thing i found about it is it's very very lonely and that's yeah. the thing i don't like about it yeah. Is that you travel from town to town, you sit in a dressing room on your own watching the clock tick round to eight o'clock, and you think, if I don't get up on stage, nothing's going to happen tonight. It's just me now. And I find that very lowering. I just find it quite depressing. That you have to, you know, it's all right once you're on stage, but that sort of waiting, and it's only you. And... Yes. 
I think it's quite it's quite a hard thing to have that right the right temperament. Yeah. You know, unless you're sort of hard drinking bloke with a with a great entourage. Then and I, you're not. And I'm not. With a great I'm not either of those or any of those. <laughs> Do you hold with the old chestnut that being you know being a funny person necessarily means you've got to be extremely depressed? No, but I think. I think it has to be said that a lot of people who choose comedy are coming from a place of alienation or a feeling apart or feeling disjointed from things, which gives them that great sort of crackpot view of things. It's not, it's not the people who were chosen for the netball team that are all our great stand-up comedians. It is spotty, specky, lard assed people, yeah. generally, and Speak people that an audience yeah. <laughs> people that an audience feel comfortable with. Yeah. I mean, in America, possibly it's different. Their women tend to be more glamorous, but, you know, in, in England, women stand-up comedians tend to be a bit, you know, potato-faced. Yeah. Do you think it's an attractive thing to be funny? Yes. Did you yeah. ever find that it worked with boys when you were a bit younger, when no. you were on the lookout for no. boys? No, it has never, ever... It's never, ever had any knock-on effect, sexually. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. <laughs> yes. But, uh, pity. Do you do you think I'm not I'm... sure that it is attractive socially. No, I'm not sure actually, because I think it I think people find it intimidating. They either find it intimidating or they feel they need to top you. You know, joke wise. Yes, yes. Or they need to impress you. I mean I think that's after you reach a certain level of celebrity, then any encounter you have with a stranger is informed by the fact that they know you're a comedian and so they can't just say, I got off a bus, they're oh, I got off a bus <laughs> and yeah, well, you know, oh, please. I don't know. <laughs> but I think possibly around comedians it's the desire of other people to please the comedian as yes. well, to have the crack. Yes, I think so. You know. I mean I think people I send sometimes people are disappointed when they meet me because I don't usually say very much. But do you yeah. decide whether you're going to be generous then or not? I, I socially, I just don't have that urge to really talk to people. I don't know. It's an accurate hermit. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. <laughs> I think I am a little bit that. I, I do think that. Sometimes I will avoid going to something. Yes. Because I think that's going to be like work. Yes. It's, it's, I it's mean, the sort of energy that, that I absolutely put into my work that I don't want to put into my private life, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And people do tend to think, I know Lenny has this, where people will say, oh, cheer up. <laughs> Yeah, Do it all happen. the time yeah. because his face in yeah. repose yes. it doesn't look like cheerful yes. old Len, mm. you know, and they mm. wonder why he's you know mm. they wonder, think he's been a bit grumpy. Yes, I find yeah. personally, I don't know if this happens to you, that I am a gift usually to the parents and the older people at weddings. I am chosen <laughs> to sit in a corner with groups of um, elderly relatives. <laughs> Because I guess because I will behave and I, I will feel the need to entertain them a bit. Mm. Can't help that. I absolutely feel the need not to, really. But then I find that usually people will take over and, and entertain themselves, so that's fine. Yeah. I'm happy to listen to any old rubbish. Really. <laughs> so you, you definitely don't feel the need to... It's no. not performing necessarily, but it's being... It's but, pumping out that thing that you would pump out on stage. It is. And I don't like, I don't like doing it. So maybe that's not natural to you anyway, to do that. No, I guess it's not. No. <laughs> no, 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 it's a, no, no. I think Jennifer is very like that. Jennifer is exactly Jennifer. like that. Jennifer Fathead. Oh, I know. Her. Is very much like that. She she really will not. And she's she's the only person She'll I know. She barely opened her mouth anyway. She's barely. She's got a, no, a mobile top lip. lip. No, she was so told. She was told at Dharma College, a mobile top lip. Well, I was told I had a deformed jaw. Well, as I was not I was being not accepted to drama school. Because is that because I, you wouldn't speak? No, I was trying to speak when I was my mouth to the sideways. Even and though really I would never, I sort of yeah, I don't think anybody would know. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer is the only person I know that will sit at the hairdressers and say, "Could you not talk to me, please? Because I really don't <laughs> want to engage in any conversation while we're having a haircut." And then she doesn't have to speak. Well, yeah, the rest of us are straining to discuss our holiday plans. <laughs> yes. <actually. laughs> now I am thinking, oh God, I hope I've got enough energy to entertain this hairdresser for the, ne for the next 40 minutes. What have I done in my life <laughs> yeah. that I could exaggerate for her amusement? <laughs> I mean, that's pathetic, isn't it? I'm definite need to please person. Do, do you seek approval from anyone? I think that the approval I've sought from my career has been has been enough really it hasn't had to to spill over I don't seek it from everybody I meet I'm not I'm not trying to impress everybody I'm not trying to make everybody laugh but it's a re it's been a real need for me to do that on on stage but luckily I've I've had that what happens with you and critics do you how, how do you handle that very badly I'm very oversensitive to what people 
say. I find it really upsetting. I try not to read them, even even the good ones. I don't. It's it's too. I, I feel like I've got a, a skin missing, really. Yeah. You know, I, I feel I should be robust and should say yes, it's tomorrow's chip paper, but. I've, you know, those, those words are emblazoned on my mind. The first time I went to the Edinburgh Festival in 74, when I was about 21, and I, I had a review saying, well, at least when at least when she's acting, she's not singing, so that's something, you know. And, that's, <laughs> and my first play, it said, well, we've seen this before, you know. <laughs> and I was you know, so yeah, pleased to have written a play. Really and it, it really hurts. But can you remember as clearly as that any nice things people no, have written? No, can't no. Have you ever wanted to escape from an image you've created of yourself that you think other people have? Well, I've never really known what, what my image was, what other people... Luckily, you don't know what people see of you. Thank God. I don't think I could live with that if, I, if that was projected onto the back of my eyeballs. So I don't, I don't worry about it, really. I just try and look like I look and not, not worry what people are seeing and what they're taking from it. Have you ever thought, oh, people think that you're this kind of performer and you want to battle against that a little bit and jump out of that box? No, because I only ever do... I do what I want to do, really, you know, and I choose what I want to do. And So I've not, I've not been restricted by anybody. I mean, I don't get offered many other things than the, than the stuff I do, so sometimes I think when I see people in films, I think, oh, I could have played that. Why has nobody ever, nobody ever asked me to do that? But I think, So I think people have an image of me as this sort of person who only does and does the things that she writes and doesn't want to be offered anything, so I hardly ever am. Well, it might be true, mightn't it, that you quite like to control what you do. Yeah. Whereas if somebody offers you a part, you don't get to control it. Yeah. I mean, I've certainly found yeah. that. Yeah. When did you start to control what you did in terms of, I mean, you've obviously always written it, um, but when did you decide that you might be able to call the shots? I don't know, really. Um... What's lovely is if you can if you work with somebody who who brings something else to it. So I think sometimes it's a bit limiting when you try when you when you just rely on your own vision. And I know for myself, I'm not a very visual person, so I'm always glad to work with somebody else who has a good eye. The reason I'm asking you that is because I think we had a moment, um, Jen and I, when we realised that you could go into the editing suite mm. and you could make some choices about mm. things. And Jennifer now will have monitors. Facing her on the floor when she's yes. making TV. Yeah, the two Not, used to do that. Oh, did they? Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes if you've written a sketch and you know the way it goes, it's very Certainly. hard. I then. think with, I think with sketches, I think you have to you have to call the shots really. Because it's only you understands, you know, that it's funny you looking like that, but it's not funny me looking like this, and you yeah. have to say that. Plus, quite a lot gets lost in from writing something on a page. You cannot mm. expect someone else to totally understand no, everything. Right. There are things you that's forget right. to write. Yeah. And yes, you, and you, have yeah, a, you, know, you just have a shorthand yeah. and mm. you're amazed when people don't know what mm. that is. Mm. Um, do you wish there were more women performing or are you secretly glad there aren't? No, I used to be delighted. I used to be delighted there weren't any because I thought it gave me an advantage. And truthfully, I really don't care because all that matters is that people are good. And it seems to me that, that the reason there are so few is that, the, that only a few have chosen to do it. It's not that people couldn't do it, it's just that they don't want to. Because it is an odd thing to want to do, and maybe it is a more male thing to want yeah. to control a huge bunch of people. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've always thought that the only way you answer that question is why there's so few, which you haven't asked me, but I'm no, asking myself and answering. You, <laughs> um, you have to ask the ones who want, who want, who felt they couldn't do it, and you say, well, why, why couldn't you do it? There's this idea that there's female comedy yeah, and yeah. there's comedy, and I just ever just wanted to be comedy. You know? Yeah. I sort of wish more younger women would step up, really. I just wish it, was, it wasn't a question that ever had to be asked. Yeah, that you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't have to make but this programme. But even program. in the... You, you, I'm not making this programme for that reason no, at all. No, no, no. <laughs> but I, I, yeah. uh, I am interested in the fact that, you know, you really can go along to any comedy club and you can ask if you can stand up and do a bit of... Um, you could do three minutes in front of the mic and anybody will let you do that, virtually. Yes. But for some reason, hardly any girls do that. Yes. Girls that are great and very funny just don't think that's a proper job or they don't think they want to do it and yet they love watching you. They tell mm. me they love watching us. Mm. So yeah. I don't understand why they don't regard it as a career, you know. Or... No, I don't understand that. Well, no. we, couldn't, we can't understand it because we've done it as a career. Yeah. Yeah, but by accident almost, certainly in my case. 
<laughs> you know, it wasn't as if I thought, hey, hey mm. there's a thing I want to do. I mean, I didn't think that sort of fell into it and thought, oh, I can't believe it. Mm. Getting, having a really good time and somebody thinks this is okay to do as a job. Yes. You know, so I always felt, maybe I feel a bit guilty about it. Maybe. <laughs> Could be what about the writing? Do you, do you, do you work with a computer? No. I write longhand. I can, I can uh, touch type, but I prefer to, I write jokes longhand. I write. I write more serious things on the computer. Oh, do you? But jokes, I hardly, I hardly write them down, so it's not like a proper script. It's just sort of ideas, and I work it out on the stage. Are you very disciplined about the hours that you work? Well, I don't know. I mean, all I can say is it gets done. I don't, I don't worry about when I do it now. I just do it when I've got to do it. Oh, did you used to worry about it then? Is yeah, that I used think? to do set hours, and then, oh. uh, but then half the time I'd be sitting there not doing anything. I'm like, this is stupid. So I've loosened up on that, but it all gets done. Not a procrastinator, then? No. 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 Okay. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't used to be, funny enough. That was Jennifer's job, and I she know. still does that. I used to be definitely we can't leave the room until something's written. You know, we, I, it's kind of sort of Protestant work <laughs> ethic or something. I sort of felt we've got to be clocked in, and by yes. the time we leave you clock off, especially yes. now that there's kids to get home for and yes. busy things that you yeah. must do, there's yes. only certain part of the day that's yeah. available for it. Yes. So I sort of feel that, you know, we ought to have done something in this time. Mm. But I know that the kind of work we do comes out of chatting to each other and having ideas that ping out of the air. And they yes. can't ping out of the air unless you're relaxed. Yes. And, yeah. You know, and Jennifer will say, Let's go and have a drink somewhere. Let's go to mm. Claridge's and drink mm. expensive mm. champagne. See what that feels like for a little while and see if mm. something happens. So, but it's very tempting me to just play. Yeah. And never to get on with it, you know. But that's, when there's two of you, that's different, you know. Yeah, that's one of you. I'm not going to take myself to Claridge's. No. Well, I'll meet you there anytime <laughs> you like. Yeah, anytime you <laughs> like. Do, do you... Is anything material to you? No. No. What's off limits, hardly, then? Hardly anything is. Oh, I mean, would you would you plunder your? Well, you do, I think, or maybe you don't. Maybe it's a, a surface thing. Do you, do you plunder your own life then? Very little, very little. I touch. I I feel very odd about it. Really, I I never felt I could talk much about my children, which was all the major part of my life, because that seemed so rude to them. Really, to sort of make them into almost figures of fun. So I've did that. I've done that very, very sparingly and very in a very non-specific way. But I, I did used to say that that my son, when he was born, looked like something out of the Beano. And I said it when he was about three, and he always says, "Oh, he used, he used to say I looked like something out of the Beano." God, could have said much worse than that. <laughs> um, and now, because because I'm separated and my marriage has broken down. Which, you know, some people think, hee hee, <laughs> that's a routine. And I think, well, I can't. Like, how can I? A, because it's painful and, you know, there's somebody else involved. And, and, and I've got two children. And part of me would love to do a big routine part. And another part of me is absolutely horrified by the thought. And that's the part that wins, obviously. Yeah, that's you decide the part not that to. wins. Because you want to be honourable about that. Yes, then. yeah. And it's private. And it's private, yeah. But on, on, on another level, I like saying things that are truthful. So it, it's it's a complicated thing what you pick and choose out of your life because you are trying to you're trying to um, use things that, that other people recognise. Yeah. So I have to pick the things I think other people will tune into without being dishonest. I don't want to just stand there spouting a load of lies. So it's, it's complicated. But what goes through your head while you're performing stand up well, i think i've i have learned to enjoy it now i never used to enjoy it still i was thinking then you know what's the next thing what's the next thing what's the next thing i suppose that when i do stand up now and i'm and i'm telling jokes and talking it's as if it's as if i'm just doing it for that for the first time for that one night and the, those things are very real it's all very real to me when i say oh, this happened or that happened it's as if it really has happened <laughs> even though it's lies <laughs> And I'm, it's, 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 you know, you are really in the moment. I'm able to be in the moment, which is very lovely. Are you thinking ahead a lot? And are you editing anything? Or no. Are I you making mental notes of what you might change? Or No, I think when I come off, I might think, oh, actually, da 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 da, da. But at the time, so it's always sinking in at, at some level. Do people ever thank you for making them laugh? Yeah. yeah what do you, how do you feel about that? I think it's lovely. I, I, do, I take that as a... You know, I think... 
I don't brush it off because I think it's a lovely thing to be thanked. And I think it's a lovely thing if, if you have a job that is that is life enhancing in some way. So I feel very, really, really fortunate to have had that to have had that job, been able to do that thing. So I don't dismiss it. And even though I know I know myself I've not always had the enjoyment out of it that I might have had, I do appreciate the fact that other people have had huge enjoyment. And when I see other people work and it gives me a buzz then I know that other people are getting that buzz off me. So I'm not, I'm not going to be dismissive of it now. I'm very grateful for it. Were, were you, do you think? Yes, I was, because I didn't want to get conceited. So people, I still... <laughs> but now, oh, I lap it up now. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that you will be doing stand-up forever? I don't know. I think this is a, this is a complication to do with women that, that men don't have. I think there is, there is a a perception of of a woman not being able to do something after a certain age and because comedy is tied up with attractiveness in some way even though we're not most of us not overtly sexy or glamorous i think there is a prejudice against older women doing anything like reading the news so i can't deny that that would be a consideration so i don't know I mean, and how you know, will we, you know? You'll just I wait until it feels uncomfortable? I don't know. I don't know, because I thought a couple of years I had stopped doing it. I had stopped doing stand-up, but I don't know whether I really have or not. Oh, I might have to carry on doing it. And I, and I was 50 then, and I thought, well, 50 is a good time to stop. And I don't, I don't need to do it. There's, lots of, there's other things I can do. But you might want to do it. I might want to. I might... If I want to do it, then I think it'll be the right thing to do. And, and bollocks to anybody who thinks I'm too old to do it. Yeah. In America, you find Joan Rivers, you know, but you find people yeah. that will crack on with it because they're obviously enjoying it or they want to do it. Yeah. But I can't think of anybody in this But country. then there hasn't been any... There hasn't been any mainstream stand-up comedians yet. I mean, apart from myself, I'm probably the oldest one, I would think. I can't think of anybody, God. you know. I probably am the oldest one. So I guess it's up to me. <laughs> it's up to but me they, to either yeah, carry on or not. I am the vanguard. Yeah. But I, you know, I won't. But, I won't carry on unless I've got something to say. It's, it's really whether you've got something to say. Yeah, and you have got the pressure of nobody's done this before. So is it right or wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's a funny old. It's a funny old thing, really. Because I, I imagine that by this time, as you would have thought, that there would be, there would be a lot of girls going round playing the big theatres and having the big telly show and doing the big the big shows or running at, at the West End or something and there aren't any no there aren't any comparable to you and Jennifer and myself yeah if you're doing stand-up I think you've got to have something to say once once you remove yourself from that sort of you know the frilly shirted tarby style comedian where they just did you know my mother-in-law said this I walked into a bar once you start trying to do routines a bit about yourself, you've got to know something about the world or something about yourself. And when I started at 21, I didn't have anything to say at all. So I could, I could write sort of little funny songs, but they were just feeble, really. It was like sort of sixth form stuff. But a few years down the line, I sort of got a line on something. Mm-hmm.